Alright, I want to preface this by saying this video is about the silly comments that this user made, but it's not just about them. Uh, because if it was just about, oh, look at this nonsense, then that would be a video meant to humiliate them and to dunk on them. Oh, look how dumb they are. You know, and that's not the point at all. I mean, my uh, initial reaction to these comments was a mixture of finding it amusing and also being a little annoyed. But the reason why this video is being made is because it leans into a greater point. And I think that this is a kind of sentiment that might be shared by other people. So just in case, uh, that's why this video now exists, so that I can point out demonstrably that it is not so. Okay, so I don't know who Ari Erucite is, but apparently in some chat, you know, someone sent these, uh, these screenshots to me. Okay, what's a modern Gen 4 team? Hippo, Clef, Skarm, Gliscor, Starmie, and a Sweeper. That's wrong, but, you know, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so, then, uh, the, the real meat of this is that the Gen 4 metagame has been the same for two years and it's gotten very boring. Okay, also, first of all, that's way more subjective, but I also think it's wrong. But, okay, fine, that's your opinion. And then, Ari Arusei says, BKC refuses to do anything about it. So that, that's where I come in, I guess, and that's where I got, I was like, okay, that's funny, that's uh, a, a little rude, also very incorrect in, in a number of levels, on a number of levels, pardon, but uh, sure, and now the, the final, because you know these things come in threes, granted even though I stand Gen 4 and touched it in 18 months because I've become jaded with Rachi, and BKC had a boner for that fucking thing, so it'll never get banned. Okay, so, so much of this is wrong on a number of levels, and again, I this is not dissimilar at all to what people think of, like, Finchinator, right? Uh, I actually have a funny video idea planned for that, but I haven't thought it through. Wait, like, people will always say about Finchinator, or just in general, you know, like, uh... Before it was Finch, it was always some scapegoat. Usually, usually a faceless one. Uh, it's like, oh, Smogan won't ban Thing here, even though whatever. When in reality, like if you take Gen Five, for example, it's like, oh, well, you know, Smogan will never ban, you know, Keltio. It's like we're trying. It is not that simple to just go, oh, well, you know, I'll snap my fingers and there goes that thing. You know, if this was Gen 3, before the massive influx of players brought about by the increase in competitive Pokemon's popularity, brought about by the Gen 4 games' Wi-Fi compatibility, then yes, in those days, it was just one guy who was a good player, and he's like, I'm in charge, and I decided Celebi is banned from OU, deal with it. And it was a smaller community, so you could, I mean, and if you didn't, if you want to play with Celebi, you just, you know, formed your own little community. But now we're, you know, playing Smoke and Rules, it's a lot bigger. And so it's not just one guy. Uh, the way that tiering functions is a mixture of qualified players in charge and uh, input from the wider player base. In theory, anyway, like, it took us a long time to get to that place of qualified players in charge because there was a lot of... I mean, this sounds hilarious uh, because in the context of Pokemon, but I promise it's true. There was a lot of political maneuvering in order to populate seats on these councils. Like, you had admins who did not play the game involved in making decisions for OU tiering, right? It was absolutely horrendous, and it took years and years and years to change that. And yours truly was among the most vocal proponents of, hey, why is this guy on the council? He doesn't play the fucking game. All right, so please, just if nothing else, please don't question the idea that I have anything but the but the Gen Four meta games uh, best interest at heart. You know, Gen Five set it on fucking fire. Drop Kieran White in there for all I care. But Gen Four, I I have too much emotional attachment to that. So as far as this tier goes, I only only want the best for it, and I have a long track record of arguing for the best for it, which we'll get into soon. But yeah, like, even beyond just like, oh, the admins want to be on the OU Council. Like, uh, if we're talking about DPP, then I was just looking at the old Sandvale thread, and I realized my dimensions are very messed up here, but don't really worry. Don't worry about it, because I'll link it in the pinned comment. But, uh, 
in this thread where people were trying to ban Sandvale and DPP, which used to be a contentious thing. It wasn't as easy as all oh, this is obviously broken. We had, it took years to get anything done about Sandvale, you know, and Baton Pass. So, and in that Sandvale thread, then one of the qualifications for voting was that the player was a tournament director, which has nothing to do with DPPOU capability, and just all kind of incompetent bureaucratic nonsense, right? So I have, this is why this, comments like this annoyed me, because I have fought through so much to make DPP uh, as best as it can be and remove all the dumb nonsense from it. And now it's like, oh, well, BKC is like, first of all, it's not even just me. If, well, we'll get to that one thing at a time. Okay, so just to address the this first, right? It's all just Hippo, Clef, Scarm, Gliscor, Starmie, and a Sweeper. That is very, very incorrect. Uh, first of all, Starmie is not the standard on that team anymore. It's Latias, because why would you go through the hassle of spinning when you could just ignore spikes altogether? You know, like, uh, or be very robust against teams that focus on long-term passive damage, which a team of Hippo, Clef, Skarm, Gliscor, Latias, plus Filler is going to be. And that Filler tends to be Jirachi or Rotom, both of which are also known for their longevity. So, not to say that you can't use Starmie. The team that this is referring to was a team I built at the end of 2018 uh, when Latias first uh, came back. And before that, August had a similar team. It was Hippo, Clef, his was Hippo, Clef, Skarm, Zapdos, Starmie, Jirachi, I think. And because he, he really liked that second steal, uh, especially with Latias coming back. I think his team was pre-Latias, though. I'm, I'm not sure. But mine was post-Latias, and it definitely did have that second steal. And mine was Gliscor instead of Zapdos, because it has that fighter counter ability, but it also has Taunt. Because it this uh, gives you a big edge over other defensive teams. An enormous edge. So, yeah, that's the kind of team you're referring to. That, like, random sweeper in the back has never, ever been a part of the tier. And I guess this, like, normally I don't, like, want to go out of my way of, like, oh, this player doesn't know anything about the tier, why are they talking? Because, you know, people can have their opinions. But when it's so aggressive... Then I take the lack of knowledge a lot more seriously, I guess. You know, it's like, because it just, if it's just someone going, oh, well, we should unban Salamence or whatever, it's like, yeah, sure, whatever. But you know, as soon as it's like, oh, we should unban Salamence because everyone in charge of DPP is a fucking idiot who doesn't know what they're talking about, it's like, oh, okay, let's, you know, it just takes a little bit of provocation. Well, serious provocation, I guess, because uh, you can brush off minor things like, oh, people don't know what the fuck they're talking about, bring back Deoxys Speed or something, and it's like, okay, this is clearly silly. But this I, this is not over-the-top and cartoonish. You know, this is a little too based in reality, because clearly this person has some idea of what Gen 4 OU is like, and is not just someone who just clicked on the ladder for the first time using Dusk Noir Evire. But... Yeah, uh, so this is not the, a modern Gen 4 style. Like, what, that last sweeper would be like, I guess you could use Call Mind Latias there, but yeah, other than that, not really. Uh, and that's not really much of a sweeper. I mean, most of the time, Latias is not going to be running Call Mind there because it takes too long for it to get anything going. So, yeah, I mean, you can th throw things like Magnazone in that last slot, but yeah. So then the Gen 4 metagame, the exact same for two years now. It's gotten very boring, and I refuse to do anything about it. So the boring thing, what you this is why it's subjective. What some people call boring, other people call a stable metagame. You know, and if you just, like, I, I, this is not exclusive to, like, people who don't know what they're talking about either. I remember a few years ago there was this very experienced player who was talking about how old gens get boring if there's not some sort of manual shakeup every six months, and competitive Pokemon isn't competitive anyway, so let's just in, throw in a bunch of Ubers because who cares anyway? And that kind of attitude is, I do not care for at all, uh, because boring is subjective, and these are people who are not really involved in the tiers themselves. They just want to get handed teams and uh, play the game. But I find, I, I think if you ask anyone who actually builds for DPP, they will agree 
yeah, the, you can find a million things to build in here. And people are going to spam standard teams no matter what kind of state the metagame is in. So, be, you know why? Because most of the players playing it don't play it regularly. They don't build for it. Even a lot of players that play it regularly don't build for it. And they're always just getting handed copied teams. So, yeah, of course you're going to see a lot of the same stuff over and over. Because people either can't or won't uh, build their own teams a lot. So, uh, it's really what you prefer seeing. And if you prefer seeing offensive stuff, great. Uh, but, you know, defensive teams are good in DPP, because, and that's a good thing, because they're not overwhelming. You know, if you want them to be completely unviable, then, I'm sorry, that's just a you problem. Where, And this comes back to the thing where people have no patience at all and just want all metagames to be, you know, non-stop slugfest going a million miles an hour where the only semblance of defensive stability is the immunities some attacks have. You know, and actual defensive teams being good, because as soon as the game slows down, then, you know, their blood starts boiling and they get mad, and I've, this is, I've observed this throughout my entire competitive Pokemon career. It's, it's why some people start, you know, screaming at you as soon as a Blissey comes out in Gen 4. So, uh, yeah. Now, the very boring part, that's fine. But uh, to add to that, defensive teams are very good. I would also say this misses the point that offensive teams are very good. And there are so many options. You know, I just made a, another video. I think it was the Advanced Cup Finals uh, where ABR, I was talking about ABR style teams and how they're very defensive in nature, and they're so well built that they're nearly an automatic win against, I mean, you have to pilot them well, obviously, but they very they give you a very good natural advantage against very standard styles of offense to the point of near automatic wins. And when I say standard styles of offense, I mean like bad styles of offense. You know, this is uh, mostly very true in advance where uh, you see these kinds of teams most now. But uh, in DPP, like these kinds of teams were developed by myself and several other players as a response to a more offensive metagame. You know, a few years ago, people were complaining DPP is too offensive. I thought that was nonsense then too, but then specifically, you know, went out of my way to try and make teams that were more defensively robust in response to this offensive metagame, and they are very stable. But the idea that they are, um, that defensive teams are just completely choking out any semblance of viability offense has, which this kind of sentiment is directly implying, uh, is laughable. I played a, a bunch, a big DPP tournament a while ago, and I used offense almost the entire time. I even made some videos about it, and it is really good. I even face defensive teams nonstop, and the tools are all there. You just, uh, but uh, this, so this is really just a, a player problem rather than a metagame problem. It's not like I'm like I've seen similar sentiments for Gen 8 OU where some players who actually play the tier say, you know, defensive stuff isn't broken. Are you guys out of your mind? Look at these offensive teams that are good. You know, uh, it's the GSC thing all over again. It's like oh, GSC is all stalls. Like if you actually play GSC, you will see that the offensive side of the metagame is way more dominant than the stall side of the metagame. So. This is a, uh, the first point of contention, that the Gen 4 is all the same, it's all about uh, defense, which it, it's implying with that previous comment about it being all hippo, scarm, clef stuff. So, both, you know, if you think it's boring, then okay, I can't do anything about that. But if you think that it's all just about people bringing defense, then your issue is with people bringing defensive teams... Uh, to the point of your people, your issue is with people using defensive teams a lot because they're successful. Because if defensive teams were bad, people wouldn't use them. You know, in, in the more offensive uh, period of DPP of several years ago, then people didn't use defensive teams nearly as much. And the times that they did show up, then they tended to get rolled by very standard offense. So your issue is really just with defense being viable to the point where it's being spammed. Uh, and so, since players will also, the majority of the player base will always use spammed, uh, will always use copied teams from other players, then they're going to want the most popular, viable teams. 
and defensive teams are going to be a part of that in DPP, so you just don't want those defensive teams to be a good option, you know? So, that's, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but that's really a you problem and not accepting defense in Pokemon, which is a good thing. Uh, if, it, if it'd be suffocating, I would be the first to say, all right, guys, I don't know about this. Off if offense is completely unviable, and I hope that my decade of arguing for the for positive changes for DPP, you know, backs me up on this. But uh, speaking of backing me up on this, I think it has been demonstrated that offensive teams are very good if you know how to use them and build them. So that's the first part of why this is such libelous nonsense. Because it, it's not just like, oh, the you know, let people have their opinions. Because when this kind of sentiment spreads, that's what, when it's wrong, that's when perception of the tier goes down. And that is something I really dislike. Because for a long time, there were all these horrible ideas circulating about DPPOU and how terrible a metagame it was, based on things that people who didn't play the tier said. You know what a, a running joke was um, for years? It was, I hope my last beats your last, because people thought the metagame was too offensive, and it needed team preview, and met games were just coin flips based on whoever's last Pokemon wound up matching up better, which is the dumbest fucking thing ever. I hope that is self-evident now. And yet that was a widespread sentiment among good players, good players who didn't play DPP, but good players. And then that wound up becoming the uh, vast majority of the sentiment around the tier as a whole, despite how laughably stupid it was. And, you know, now the idea is because you know, these things are always come in extremes. You know, it's uh, either, oh, the tier is so offensive that we need team preview and that's why it's a bad metagame. And now it's, oh, stall is too good. Like, give me a fucking break. You know, like, I've, the player base flip-flops on stuff like this all the time, and that's why it's generally... I think uh, one of my neighbors is using a power tool in his garden, so if you can hear that, I apologize. But you know what? It adds to the frustration I'm feeling, which is good to let out. Anyway, so... Uh, where, where was I? Yeah, uh, after the Doug Trio ban, people were like, oh, well, Clef sucks now. Stall teams suck now. You know, I think they're just going to trend down. They're no longer viable. And then a couple months later, then, you know, some stall teams were successful. Oh, they're completely broken now. So when it comes to the vast majority of people's opinions on the tier, they really need... It's not that... I mean, my first instinct was obviously to call them a bunch of incompetent morons, which, you know, I, I don't completely, you know, take back. But the more charitable interpretation, because I know I can get a little upset about this stuff, uh, is that people generally, or let's say, just, let's just say the nicer version of saying the same thing, uh, is that people really need other people's opinions to guide their own if they're not the most experienced, which I guess is, is a nicer version. Uh, or it's not the exact same thing, it is nicer. Because if they're not as experienced, then of course they're going to be influenced by others more. Uh, and you see this like in advance, there's a perfect example. Fortress's viability in Gen 3 Consider by most player in the eyes of most players, I should say, it was it would fluctuate up and down based on what one or two guys would say about it. You know, it would be like, oh, Fortress sucks, and everyone else would go, yeah, Fortress is terrible. We don't even have to think about it anymore. And then it's like, oh, never mind. I think Fortress is good now. And everyone else was like, oh yeah, Fortress, yeah, totally, it's great. And then the same thing again a few months later, and the whole there were a couple players who the whole time said. Fortress is terrible, just period, guys. Like, what are you talking about? Or they would say, Fortress is always good, guys. What are you talking about? And, you know, the same thing for other Pokemon, like Salamence or Jirachi or Aerodactyl. So, uh, that is another reason why this video is being made. That when ignorant nonsense like this gets spread, then it affects the uh, perception of the tier. And I really cannot stand for that. Now, for the other point of contention that I refuse to do anything about it personally. I am flattered on one hand, that you think I have the power to just unilaterally make these decisions by myself, right? Like, uh, thank you, I really do, I mean, that sounds so fake, but it is uh, nice to imagine, or, or to know that, like, some players think, oh yeah, just BKC's in charge, he's the Gen 4 guy, right? You know, why is he not doing anything about this? So, uh, 
now I will list my... Um, so first of all, I've been arguing for DBP stuff as far back as 2013, where I first floated the idea of bringing Latias back. Latias coming back, by the way, is the reason why DBP is no longer... Oh, why is, why is there no team preview? Everything's too strong. And I thought the metagame was fine, but I thought Latias would make it better, and it would add more stability... And that's exactly what it did. You are no longer as overrun by things like Zapdos. Yeah, people were genuinely complaining about Zapdos in DPPOU pre-Latias. If you want an idea of how chaotic, let's say, uh, it was. So, Latias brought a ton of stability and brought even more, or brought a lot of offensive potential as well. So, if you want to break, if you want to defend against things with Latias, great. If you want to break opposing defense... Latias is your Pokemon. I, even in that DPPOU underrated sets video I did for my buddy Ryan Gosling, then I, uh, went, I, I think I spoke at length about how good Specs Latias is uh, with Healing Wish. So, yeah, okay, so now I will adjust my dimensions. The old, the people who are in charge of old generation tiering are the old generation councils. The old generation councils exist because of me. And that is because post-Gen 5, it was still obviously a mess, and people wanted to, you know, ban Chlorophyll and Sun, and then there was a the whole unbanning Excadrill thing, and it was a mess, right? Completely disorganized. And people were saying, oh, well, who do we go to with, you know, who has the authority to speak on this? You know, a lot of it was just, oh, well, McMegan knows his stuff. What should we do? I, let him decide, you know, who cares? All right, so uh, this obviously could not continue, especially because there were things like GSC freeze clause being argued. And the question is, wait, who do we go to for this? And then, you know, the, the, the idea of, oh, they're old gens, leave them alone, very clearly became archaic because you can't... If these tiers are going to consistently be played in a tournament setting, they are going to evolve. And no, you are not going to uh, find every single viable option during a uh, metagame's measly three-year tenure as current gen. And sometimes you are going to find broken stuff that didn't uh, wasn't known before, right? So you need to have some sort of council in place. I brought this into existence. I fought for it, and I was on many of the councils for many years. In addition to DPP, I was on the councils for Oris, Black and White, Advance, and GSC. And I'm sorry to make this video into such a brag of sorts, but I really have to back this up with qualifications or whatever. So, you are now looking at the... If you're watching, then uh, if you're just listening, you're fine. Uh, the On the screen right now, the old generation councils, as they currently are on today, September 22nd, 2023 you will notice i am not on any of them anymore so and even if i were on the dpp council then you would see that i would not be the only person in charge i would also have four other players there that's the whole point you have a council not just one person and even if the entire council says oh let's do so and so then you have the old gen council leaders August and Star, and things have to pass through them. And I'm very glad we have them, because previously, the people overseeing the old gen councils were people who didn't play the game, and that made the DPP Latias test, for example, very difficult to push through. So, you will notice also that BKC has left the DPP council in September 2021, two years ago. Right? I have not been on the council. And, even more so, I recently was, uh, because we mentioned, uh, oh, I guess if we go back to this image about how BKC had a fucking boner for Jirachi so it'll never get banned, I do not think Jirachi should be banned. I do think Ironhead should be banned. And, just recently, I asked uh, some of the DBB Council guys to add me back to the chat so I could make a case for Ironhead as a whole, not or Ironhead on Jirachi, or 20% and up flinch moves, 
you know, because some people complain about Waterfall Gyarados. I don't care what form it takes. I think the metagame is great as is, pretty much perfect, but I think it would be even better or more perfect without Iron Head on Jirachi. I do not think that would be a negative, and I made this case, you know, fervently, and then... All of us, I mean, this was not just my idea. A lot of the other DPB Council uh, members have pitched before, guys, what if we just get rid of Ironhead on Jirachi? You know, then everything is solved, minimal damage done. And because it's not the policy of the... It's not tiering policy, then it will never happen, as has been repeatedly told to us by August and Star and Roses, the people in charge. You know, that's their policy. So... Even, let's say, even if I did want to ban Jirachi on my own, I could not make that happen. Everyone else would have to agree. So, and I also do not think Jirachi as a whole should be banned. I think the metagame, even with Ironhead Jirachi, fine. I mean, what, is there something about Ironhead? No, it's just Jirachi. Um, which I know, you know, is basically the same thing. But, yeah, I... I I think Ironhead Rachi should be banned, and we can't because, and, you know, I don't have the power to, you know, go over everything else. So, to wrap this video up, because somehow I've managed to stretch this out to over 25 minutes, good lord. Uh, the reason why we don't have thing, nonsense in the tier, like Sand Veil or Baton Pass, is, and the reason why we have Latias is because over the years I have, you know, spent way too much time and energy arguing about these things. You know, I made the Baton Pass thread, I argued with all the idiotic nonsense people spewed about, oh, well, what if, you know, the metagame gets unstable because Baton Pass isn't there anymore to, you know, fucking ruin safe teams because that's a good thing. You know, people, this is just the at whole idiotic idea of people not wanting uh, competitive metagames and wanting chaos instead. Which, I mean, if you want Baton Pass in the metagame, I'm sorry. So... Uh, and then a bunch of people who don't play the game chiming in and clogging up this nonsense. That is what I have argued with. So please don't question... Yeah, I'll, I'll stop removing. People were suggesting banning Gliscor. Are you out of your fucking mind? So... Uh, and the, I mentioned that thread. And I'm, I'm sorry to, you know, put KG on blast like this. Uh, but I mentioned the sickle cell anemia malaria thing what the hell was it yeah the mutation of hemoglobin that causes sickle cell anemia increases resistance to malaria in the population this was used as an argument for keeping baton pass in dpp you see the fucking nonsense i had to deal with yeah so i know there will always be people with ignorant opinions out there and i am sorry for being this aggressive towards you know some nonsense in a chat but this this was larger than just you know blowing off some steam. It's like oh fucking BKC and his Jirachi, you know it's because it's not that. You know I had to argue with Sandvale nonsense. Uh, you know which, ugh. Yeah, and even the Latias retest, uh, which this it was not just this one thread posted by Ojama, approved by BKC. I did approve it, you know, and I uh, argued for it in this thread and a million other threads, and. I made the point, I argued against all the idiotic points being made. Well, th there are some good points against Latias in particular, but a lot of other points were stupid. Like, there were certain admins who were, um, God, that, that infuriated me so much. Let me find what that test was. This is a great thread. But yeah, there was, uh, there was, there were certain, there were admins who didn't play DPP who said, Oh, wouldn't this be a problem? You know, wouldn't inf oh yeah, th th here's what it was. Wouldn't Infernape and Breloom be a problem if uh, wouldn't Infernape and Breloom be a uh, nah, be a problem? Wouldn't Infernape and Breloom be unviable if Latias came back? And the answer is very much no, not even a little bit. And then the admins would just ignore that point entirely because their whole thing was stone will be broken without Inferno even Breloom. Da, 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 da. And you you can just list all the million ways that uh, all the God these posts are so fucking bad. Uh, all the million ways that uh, Inferno even Breloom could still very much mess up stall teams. You know with Latias, then 
the these that would suddenly no longer be a point and they would just go oh well we just don't feel like it we're not convinced even though it's like why should i have to convince you you don't know what the fuck you're talking about so i realize you know the irony of that is that i'm making this video to argue with people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about but at least now if someone else wonders oh how does tiering work is it just the bkc's and finchinators of the world or you know people said this about abr too uh, is it just them who just like single-handedly da, da 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 And look, I'm not saying that councils have not been incompetent before. They have been famously so. But in this case, specifically regarding DPP Jirachi, it has been... It is not because of incompetence or inaction. Yeah, so... Alright, that's uh, everything for me. It's 30 minutes. That's enough. Thank you so much for watching or listening. Uh... I hope this has been useful or enjoyable for you, and I will see you in the next one.